All right, this is Doc D, uh, CIS 101, lecture for Wednesday, October 28th. And this is uh, the introduction to database management or data management. And uh, so we're going to talk about uh, different ways that we can store data. And uh, we're going to start with uh, what's something that uh, everyone is most likely familiar with in that uh, the spreadsheet or a list. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, some advantages and disadvantages of the spreadsheet and how we can use that. And uh, then we're going to talk about uh, databases uh, themselves. Uh, and we're going to talk about um, a way that we can interact with that database, which is called SQL, uh, or otherwise known as Structured Query Language, SQL. So without further ado, let's uh, begin. So let's talk a little bit about uh, Excel. All right. And so if you want to follow along and uh, do this, and again, this is through distance learning, so a little more clunky to do this. Uh, generally, when I do this in class, I have students uh, follow along and do this as I'm doing it and uh, it adds a, a great illustration of uh, how complex uh, some of this can be and how simple some of it can be. Uh, so anyhow uh, if you wish to follow along go ahead and open up Excel and go ahead and start a spreadsheet and across the top uh, headers there you're going to put uh, an entry for number, first name, last name, dorm, area code, favorite color, favorite animal. All right. And what I would have you do in class is then you would get with uh, other members of your class and you would collect data for five or six different people, right? And uh, input that in there so that we've got some real data to work with. Uh, but we don't have that. And so uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bring up an example worksheet All right. and so there we go so this is a two-dimensional table in that we have uh, columns and rows so our columns A B C D E F G and then rows uh, which are going down the left here all right and so they're numbered one to infinity I don't know where this thing actually cuts off at I've been well over several thousand all right and so uh, uh, spreadsheets are really, really handy tools, and uh, I use them quite a bit um, for some very specific things. But uh, really good for storing um, random, not random, but uh, for storing limited amounts of data. And uh, so we use these engineering field a lot of times to uh, capture data and then to perform some type of calculation on it, i.e. it goes through a function and uh, then outputs uh, a changed output, right? And so really handy tools, but when we start getting a lot of information up, um, it can become quite cumbersome to find the information that we want. All right, and so let me slide this back over here and uh, we'll go to the next slide. All right, so again, advantage of the spreadsheet, real simple, right? I can just drop in if I wanted to add some more information in here, uh, go six and uh, I don't know, Johnny, <laughs> Johnny Red, I don't know, uh, he lives at home. Or, yeah. All right, area code 667. Uh, per uh, favorite color is blue. And then his favorite animal of is, of course, the turkey. I don't know. Whatever. All right. So, real simple to add this. And, you know, as we say, the advantage of a spreadsheet, direct entry of data, uh, for limited amounts of data, really really handy and uh, easy to easy to manage um, but you know and you know again I could also um, I can put formulas in here uh, I can do a lot of different things with the spreadsheet right um, I can actually do some limited sorting of data uh, you know if I wanted to sort this in alphabetical order 
uh, by last name, I could do that, uh, which is a handy function to have. All right. Uh, I could do the same for first name. I could do it for area code. I could even do it for color or favorite animal. All right. I could sort those alphabetically. All right. And, and you could do some custom stuff as well, but that's really beyond the scope of what we're trying to talk about here today. So let me throw this back over here. All right. So what are some of the disadvantages of a spreadsheet? Um, so let's imagine, say, that um, we were doing this for the entire campus of Taylor. And so we've got, you know, three or four thousand. I don't even know what the actual number of students are. I think there's a couple thousand. Uh, so let's say we got three thousand. And so if I had three thousand different entries here, right, that can be quite cumbersome. I can't see all of it uh, at one time, right? And so, you know, here it's taking me... La, la, la. <laughs> all right, there, I got to a thousand. All right, so that's a lot of data. All right, and so if I were looking for a specific uh, piece of data, all right, it makes it kind of difficult to find it. Now, with that being said, uh, you know, I could go over here and I can do the control F and I can find, uh, I don't know, blue, all right, and it'll take me down to that. All right, and so if this was a really large spreadsheet uh, and I was just looking for that single instance, um, that would be great. And then, you know, I can go find next and it'll take me to the next one. Right. So somewhat helpful, uh, somewhat useful. All right. But what if I were looking for two different bits of information? Right. And so I wanted to find uh, everybody who's lived at home and also had a favorite color of blue. Well, then it becomes a little more complex and not something that's easily done uh, through a spreadsheet. Okay, let's throw this back over here. All right, so um, you know we do have that filter command. I talked a little bit about that earlier. So let's let's talk about that filter command. All right, uh, so. Um, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to filter this. All right, and let's sort it A to Z. All right, and it didn't do anything. Uh, actually, I need to I need to do this. Actually, I need to select the whole thing. The All right, sort A to Z. All right, now <laughs> Here we have a sort warning. So if I expand the selection, it will sort the whole thing. And so we're going to go with the default setting, and then it's going to do that. And the fact is, I think I, already, I had already done that. That's why it is that way, because when I entered it, it was not in uh, alphabetic order. So let's change that. All right, expand selection, yes, sort. And so now we have uh, going from Z down to A. All right, and so it changed all of the all of the stuff. Right, everything is in order. Now let's do, let's go back A to Z, but we're just going to continue with the current selection. Right now, I want you to notice that we got Johnny Red and me. Now all of a sudden, it's Johnny Doucher and Steve Red. Oh, what happened? All right, so. One of the inherent problems with a spreadsheet is that the information uh, in a row, right, is has a physical relationship because that's the way we entered it. All right, and when I do my sorting and filtering, all right, I can maintain that integrity. All right, but it's real easy to make an error and then it loses all integrity, right? And so now. All right, this isn't right. Okay, so I'm going to undo here and go back. All right. All right, so we can see some of the problems that we have here. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and go back to A to Z, expand selection. Yep. All right. So as we start talking about uh, databases, right, one of the things that we need to keep in mind um, is that Databases are made up of tables, all right, and tables are essentially a two-dimensional spreadsheet, okay? 
Yeah, they're, they're not really, but essentially they are. All right. One of the key elements that we have to have is that we have to have a unique ID for every record. All right. And so when we start talking about databases, this would be a record, right? And all this information uh, has a relationship to itself. All right. And then a database can be made up of multiple tables. All right. And then we can actually refer from one table to another. We can pull data from multiple tables. Okay. All right. So, uh, so it's real, real easy to disorganize the data. And I've done this before uh, when I'm inputting data and, uh, you know, inadvertently skip a row or, or you know, I, I'm, I'm transposing, I'm transferring data from one thing to another. And, you know, you copy and paste in the wrong spot and, I mean, it's just, it's very, very easy to do that. And so when you do that, you lose all integrity of that data. And so now, you know, and, and it's very, very difficult to go back and re-establish uh, that integrity of your data and the relationships of them. All right. That, that's more probably one of the biggest inherent disadvantages of using a spreadsheet other than the fact that if I have a large amount of data, it's very, you know, it's very, very difficult to make effective use of that data. All right. All right. So I already kind of talked about that. You know, each row may contain duplicate information. All right. Uh, so let's look at that. Uh, so here we have first name. We've got two somebodies, right? Uh, when we look down uh, in column here, we've got one, two, three, three homes. All right. Um, there's no duplication here. There are two purple, or excuse me, two blues in favorite color. There aren't any duplicates here. All right. And so we have redundant data. All right. All right. And I already talked a little bit about. Um, that the relationship is solely physical and, and is very easy to um, distort that and, and lose that relationship. All right, so when we talk about spreadsheets, all right, we can, um, there are three types of anomalies that can occur, all right. Uh, so it, a deletion anomaly in that uh, we can go in and delete a student, right? Uh, well, let's say that, you know, uh, this person, you know, they, uh, they're no longer here, right? They, they moved on. All right. And so I can, um, delete. All right. Now, to, <laughs> All right, so that works, okay, you know, they're gone, they're no longer, in but what we don't have is we don't have historical data then for that. Also, we can see that our unique numbers here, all right, now now we've got a break, all right, we've got, we've got an issue because that unique number now no longer exists, that two is gone. All right, so that's one of the problem, whoops, that's one of the problems with, um, spreadsheets is that, you know, we have this deletion anomaly that we can delete that record, but then, you know, uh, we don't have a historical record on that, right? So it's gone. That data is gone. We can't use it again because it just went. Now, we could uh, possibly transfer that information over to another spreadsheet, all right, which would be... Um, deleted students or whatever, okay? And so that could be done, all right? But again, that's just adding another layer of steps that I have to do uh, in order to manage this data effectively. All right, um, update anomalies. And I made a different spreadsheet for this. Let me see if I can get it up. Uh, yeah, so... Uh, Okay, so here we have <laughs> my ingenious naming convention, some student one through some student 15. And then we have our advisors here. Uh, and then uh, 
we have some related uh, advisor information, right? Um, and we'll talk more about that in that uh, this could be a table in and of itself where we have an advisor's table. And we'll talk about that in a minute that had all this. And so all I would have to have in this advising table would be the student um, and maybe maybe we would have their department and an advisor, right? And then we could pull from that advisor table uh, this information, right? So that's, that's kind of helpful. All right, uh, so what was I talking about? Yeah, 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 Adup update anomalies. So let's say that uh, some student five decides that he is going to change his um, program. And he's going to go from engineering to, I don't know, basket weaving. Because engineering was too hard. All right, so... Uh, he changes his degree to basket weaving, right? So, okay, we make that change and we think everything is good, right? But if he now is in a different department, all right, what happens then? Well, then Dr. Starts is no longer going to be his advisor because Dr. Starts advises in the engineering program. All right, y'all see where this is going, right? And, and so then the resultant ripple effect is that is that not only does this change, but this Euler 004 changes, the office phone changes, the email changes. All right, and and likely there's a lot more data that would that would shift. Okay, so we have the ripple effect of because I changed to one thing, now I have to go in and I have to update all this other information as well. All right. And again, every time that we're doing manual updates like this, it's very, very easy to make an inadvertent error and totally destroy uh, any causal relationship that you might have within this database, right? Really, really easy. And, I, and I've, I've done it probably a thousand times in my life where I'm working on something, especially, you know, a large database or excuse me, a large spreadsheet. Uh, I got lots of different things and, uh, you know, I've been working on it for a while and I'm tired and, you know, a little slap happy and I'm typing away and then I realize, oh, dang it, I'm, I'm off. I'm off a cell somewhere and I don't know where. And so then I have to go back and try to figure out where I started the error. And so it becomes really, really problematic. All right. Well, databases allow us to do that just in one fell swoop. All right. We'll go talk about that in a minute. All right. Let me slide this back over here. Uh, insertion anomalies. All right. So same thing. Dang it. All right. Same thing. So um, let's say that um, we decide that we're going to create a new uh, department. We're going to call it systems. And Dr. Doucher is going to be the chair. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we can go in and we can insert that, right? All right. But now what we have is we've, we've added the department, but now we've got a whole bunch of null values, right? We got a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't have anything in it. All right. And so that can be problematic. Um, and again, especially, you know, when we talk about manual updating stuff, this is where you have problems. So let me, uh, yeah. All right, so we got all this stuff. All right, and we're going through. And, you know, we're making updates. Some student, whatever. Uh, 26, um, of course it's going to be me. <laughs> All right. So what happens is we have to update this. So the insertion, um, uh, anomaly is that we have gaps in the data. All right. And, and so we have to go in with a spreadsheet. We have to go in and manually fill that, um, with a database, uh, we could populate that through another table. All right, we could add that, and again, it becomes an order operations type thing in that we would want to create um, 
within our department table, we would going to hit, go ahead and start a new record, create a new record within that, right? That is systems. And then we would populate that with other information. And then we would, um, then we went in here, we could pull from that table and it would auto populate all that information, right? All right. That, that's a little more than what I wanted to talk about, but all right, so three different types of data anomalies, deletion anomalies, update anomalies, and insertion anomalies. All right, so why use a database? Well, <clears throat> databases are, by their nature, much more complex, right? Because we have relationship, uh, well, and, and let me back up when I talk about that, because there are some types of databases that are not relationship, uh, relation relational databases wow <laughs> um, but most of them are most of them are relational databases and uh, structured query language is designed specifically for um, relational databases right so why use a database well once you establish a database all right it's easy to create tables create records within those tables um, to read to update and delete or there's an acronym for that called crud uh, because you may not remember the whole create read update and delete right crud uh, but more specifically technically speaking what we're doing is we're creating all right so we're creating tables creating records within those tables we're querying all right and querying means that we are um, looking for a specific set of data all right and so uh, we'll talk about um, the power of SQL in doing just that in creating a very complex um, query to find the specific data that we that we're looking for and so I talked about earlier with the um, spreadsheet uh, of you know having multiple things right well it allows us to pull from different um, columns, all right, for specific data, and then return that data, all right. Uh, allows for easy modification of that, and then and deleting of data, all right. The biggest thing that uh, a database does is that it maintains the organizational structure of the data, and again, this is a relational database. Uh, we can and typically will have multiple tables, and so I talked a little bit about that uh, before and I think I'll talk about it again here in just a minute um, but also allows for customization of data input and output and this is um, for me this is probably one of the more uh, powerful things because we need to be able so we create a query right uh, well let's let, let's talk about forms first all right so a form is basically um, a way that we're inputting data into the table and uh, one of the things that I think about is that when uh, we'll say uh, yeah, I worked as a recruiter for a few years and during that you know we would have an applicant who came in and there was a tremendous amount of information that had to be captured uh, for each applicant right now there's a core set of data that has to be captured that then uh, is placed into diff other different areas, right? So we would have um, a typical application packet would have, uh, I don't remember, it's 25 or 30 different forms, right? That's a lot, all right? And all the data that we would capture literally could be captured on one one page form, right? And so, um, what this does is allows us to build a customizable uh, form for input of data. And so we can create this form and gather the data in a way that makes sense for us. And so an example of that would be that on the initial interview, I would fill out an interest sheet, right? Which was, you know, their name, their first name, their address, their phone number, email, um, you know, just real general information about that person. All right. And, and so, you know, it was a an organized way to gather information. And so, you know, I'd say, okay, you know, what's your name, uh, date of birth, 
what's a good cell phone for you? Uh, where do you live? All right. And so, you know, it, 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 it made sense for what we were doing. All right. So again, LinkedIn, this allows you to develop your own customized form for the input of information. Now, those forms then feed into the actual database itself to populate that data. And, you know, there can be, depending upon what is in there, there might be things that are overlapping information that could pull from that same, that same form. Which could, data from that form could go into several different places. That's what I'm trying to say. All right. Now, reports is the output of that. All right. And so reports are... Again, custom generated. So I create a query, right? A very uh, specific query looking for specific data. All right. And then I can generate a report that will find all instances of what I'm querying for. And then it will generate a custom report that I've designed. All right. In a format that I've designed to use. All right. So if I just use the uh sql query itself right it will return all of the instances of the data that i'm looking for if i if i word my query correctly all right it will return that and you know it that's useful information but it's more useful to be able to generate an actual report that has some type of formatted um, display of that information and so I, maybe I'm looking for, uh, let me pull up a different one here. Um, let's pull this one back up. So I go in and I want to find everybody uh, who lives at home and their favorite color is blue. All right. Well, let's see. Uh, so let's change this one. <laughs> All right. All right. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna look in. We're gonna see. Uh, we're gonna create a query that looks at um, dorm and where dorm equals home, and we're also gonna look at um, favorite color where favorite color equals blue, right? And so we run that query, and it's gonna come back with this one. And then, actually, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, come on. Give me a break. All right. Uh, let's see. All right. And then... All right. And so what it's going to return is this. It's going to return... The, the whole entry, right? That's what the query is going to do. It's going to return that. But let's say that I don't really, what I, what I want to output then is that if it meets my requirements in that the favorite color is blue and they live at home, that it's going to return uh, the their first name and last name, right? So I could create a report that would then, instead of generating this whole thing, right, which which would hold extraneous information. I know that if it's returning this, that I know that this is blue and I know they live at home and maybe I don't care about their area code or their favorite animal. I just want to be, know who it is. All right. So I could generate that report. And obviously this is a really, really basic and simple explanation of this. All right. But that report would then allow me to generate that. And maybe I wanted to do it as a form letter. All right, that is addressed to uh, Johnny Red and somebody different. Okay, and so I could do that. All right, that 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 is one of the powers of a database. All right, let's see here. All right, so relational databases. All right, uh, the data is stored in tables. All right, and so we may have, and, and we typically will have many different tables. Um, let's see. All right, so an example would be that, um, you know, I have a uh, advisee list, right, which lists students. So we've got a student ID, 
We've got where they live. I don't know whether that's relevant or not, but it probably is. Uh, first name, last name, their number, and then it lists an advisor, right? All right. And so maybe we want to have more information about those advisors available. We may not want to use it right now, but we may we can see a place where that would be useful, right? And so I could develop then a subsequent table that was an advisor table, right? And so what we would look at is that there would be a relationship between this, all right, on this table where the advisor's last name is this, and, and it actually would be a it would be a unique ID. Last name is not a good one to use, but I'm, again, I'm just throwing something together here to illustrate the purposes of what I'm talking about. All right. Um, and so let me go back to the other one. Uh, and I can't pull two spreadsheets up at once, which is really kind of a pain, but whatever. Um, so with a relational database, right? So I, let's say that I have these two tables, right? And so it can pull from this advisor here the same information on the other table. It, it basically these have a relationship, right? Because they're the same. All right, and this again, this would have to be a unique. <laughs> it, you know, last name is not a good one. Uh, it would be a unique, uh, unique number typically. Um, and so then I could pull from the other database. The other, not the other database, the other table in that database, all this other information, right? That, you know, first name would be Dihoon. His office phone number is this. And then, you know, he works in the engineering department. All right. So relational databases uh, typically will have multiple tables. And those tables um, have a link. They're joined. They have a relationship uh, in one column. Uh, with another column, and so we have this whole matched pair thing, right? Um, so, you know, and I just showed that. Um, so tables allow for themes, or, you know, I, I consider them to be functional areas. And so I just showed, you know, a faculty uh, advisor table, right? Uh, pull that over here. Boop. A faculty advisor table, which would allow me to populate that, all right? And then I can pull that data, pull data from this table into other tables, right? And so um, a student table would be, uh, I think it's this one, yeah. So here we have the student table, and then we're able to pull information about their advisor from another table because there's a relationship between this column, all right, in this table, and this column in that table all right and again a last name is not something that you should use because last names is you know if if one of them was Smith all right there's more bounded there's surely going to be more than one Smith all right just saying all right so again last word last names not a good option um, probably what I should have done is used you know a faculty ID which is why all of us uh, if you look at your ID card it has a unique ID on it, right? So that we can be tracked in the database at Taylor. And actually, there are multiple uh, databases at Taylor that utilize that information um, for uh, you know various uh, functions within the university. All right. So let's see what do we got next year. All right. So continuing on to talk about. Um, databases and why we want to use them all right they, they are more they are more complex they are more complicated right I mean simply by the nature of the beast um, they are more complicated but what they do do is they reduce redundancy of data right so I don't have to um, when I go to this students I don't have to have all the data for the advisor populated out here, right? I, I, don't, I don't need it, right? Because I have a separate table that has all of that that I could pull. I can pull from this table 
link to the next table. I can pull information from that table in a query, all right, um, to gather the data that I want. All right, so again, reduce the redundancy of data, which is huge, uh, preserves complex relationships of data. All right, and, and again, you know, we, we over and over and over, we keep talking about this relationship thing. Well, and again, these are relational databases that we're going to be working with, uh, with structured query language. And so those relationships are, are really the key things. You know, we've got data and then a relationship to another piece of data and being able to pull that is really what this is all about. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, so yeah, allows for, uh, and I already talked about that, input of forms and output of reports. All right, and so how do we interact with these databases, right? And so I've kind of tiptoed around this. We're, we're, we're going to be using a thing called structured query language, uh, SQL, or even SQL. Uh, all three of those names are one and the same, right? It's the same thing. Uh, so structured query language, uh, which is essentially an international language to create, store, modify, and delete. All right, or that whole CRUD example that we talked about uh, a few uh, slides ago. Uh, let's see, let's go. Da, 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 da. Yeah, create, read, update, and delete. All right, so CRUD, create, read, update, and delete, uh, or more technically speaking, creating, querying, modifying, and deleting of data. All right. So that's what uh, SQL is all about. Uh, and then, you know, it allows the ability to interact with most relational databases in use. All right. So it's a very, very powerful um, tool uh, in order to um, access, change, modify, delete, or even create. Uh, we can create tables. We can create data within those tables. All right very very powerful and we can be very very specific about what we do all right um, we can have pinpoint precision uh, but it depends upon our ability um, to write SQL statements uh, correctly and concisely all right um, so I'm still up in the air on what we are going to use. Um, in the past, I've used Microsoft Access, uh, which is available on the computers there. Um, and it does work, but it's really clunky and um, it's not intuitive. It doesn't work really well. There, there's extra things that you have to do in order to do all of this. And uh, well, again, it does work, but it's really, really clunky. Um, so, you know, the upside of using Microsoft Access is that, you know, if you have Word installed on your computer, then you have access, and so you can actually do this stuff. Um, I'm looking at using um, a different tool called MySQL, um, but I'm still examining that, and that, so I'm not sure uh, where I'm going to go with that, and that, that'll come over here in the next couple of days or so. Um, I've already written a lot of material for Access 2016, um, but I don't, again, because it's so clunky, I don't really want to use it. Um, so I, I, I don't know. The jury's still out on what I'm going to do with that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, boy, I had another thought. It just flew right away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, um, so we're also going to be using um, an online tool. Um, to uh, SQL, um, oh, what the heck is the name of that? Um, yeah, anyhow, we're, we're going to be using um, an online tool, um, and the name of it escapes me at the moment, uh, but uh, Yeah, we're going to be using, and there'll be more about that. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that's all for today. Uh, hopefully uh, this has been good. Please leave comments on um, how you like this method. Uh, I'm not really a fan of doing it this way because I don't get to see you. You don't get to see me, but it is what it is. 
so anyhow dog d out.